a dividing marker when it comes to the history of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. There's the before, the years they slogged through as an underground punk funk college radio band. And then there's the after, that saw them as one of the defining representations of the alternative rock revolution. That dividing marker was the catalyst that launched the band into superstardom. It represented a step in the direction of maturity, of being a well-rounded band that was more than just a socks on cocks gimmick. This catalyst influenced and set the stage for the changing sound of the Red Hot Chili Peppers going forward. I'm talking about a song, the biggest hit they ever produced, it's the ballad Under the Bridge. It was 1991, and the lead singer and main songwriter in the Red Hot Chili Peppers was not in a good place personally. On paper, it made no sense. The Chili Peppers were experiencing a surge in creative output as they rehearsed and wrote songs for this new upcoming album. There was this new comfort level as new drummer Chad Smith and guitarist John Frusciante had moved past the awkwardness of joining an established band, and after years of drug abuse, Anthony had finally gotten sober and never felt better physically. But it was that sobriety that had Anthony starting to feel like a wedge was being driven between him and John. They were virtually inseparable during the Mother's Milk era, and Anthony started to see that relationship wither a little bit as John grew into his own person in the band. In his memoir, Scar Tissue, Anthony wrote that he was beginning to feel like an outsider in the band because John and bassist Flea had never been closer. He felt John's resentment from his strict no-drug-around-him policy. It was one day at rehearsal where Anthony experienced this melancholy sense of loss that John was no longer in his world, that they weren't really friends anymore. Anthony was driving home from rehearsal that day, and his sense of loss and loneliness with John triggered memories of a former girlfriend he had during the peak times of his heroin addiction. He wrote in Scar Tissue that he had this beautiful angel of a girl who was willing to give him all of her love, and instead of embracing that, he was with gangsters downtown shooting speedballs under a bridge. Anthony was asked about that time and its inspiration for this song, Under the Bridge, in the 1991 Funky Monks documentary. And part of that incomprehensible demoralization is loneliness. And, um, and that's, that's something that I think every drug addict can relate to, is there's this incredible deep sense of loneliness, of emptiness, that you're trying to fill up with whatever it is that you can find. And, you know, in my case, it was drugs. Triggered by those old emotions at that rehearsal, Anthony freestyled some poetry and a melody on the drive back to his house. And once he got home, wrote the whole thing down in a song structure. And so Anthony wrote the now famous words. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. At that time, he was wandering around the city of Los Angeles looking for drugs, and it took him places that he never would have experienced normally. He said it felt like he had an unspoken bond with LA, that maybe there was a non-human entity of the city that looked after him during those dark days. One place it took him in particular leads us to the outro in the song, and as Anthony says in that documentary interview, it took him and another junkie friend of his an ex-convict of a Mexican mafia named Mario, to a freeway bridge in the middle of a ghetto in downtown Los Angeles. There was a little passageway that you had to go to to get under the bridge, and, and only certain members of this Mexican gang, which were all ex-convicts, were allowed to go in there. 
And the reason that they let me in is because this guy Mario said that I was going out with his sister, which was a lie, just so we could go in there and, um, and do what it is we wanted to do, which was to use these particular drugs we had just gotten. And, uh, and that always sticks in my brain as um, you know, a low point in my life, basically. Up to that point, Anthony had never wrote anything remotely that deep and vulnerable. So it was no wonder Anthony wanted it to remain a poem and not a song. But it wasn't until about a month after where their producer, Rick Rubin, was over at his house and was flipping through his notebook. Rick came upon the Under the Bridge poem and mentioned that he should do something with it in the band. Anthony replied by saying its slow, melodic, and dramatic style didn't mesh with the Red Hot Chili Peppers sound. But Rick insisted that he show it to the guys. And so reluctantly, he did. John came over to Anthony's house, and they sat with it and messed around with chord options and riffs. It was a completely foreign concept of writing for Anthony. John has said that he chose those chords to balance out the depressing nature of the lyrics, and that his brain interpreted it as being a really sad song, so he should write happier chords to balance it out. Under the Bridge became the biggest hit the Red Hot Chili Peppers ever had, peaking at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. It gave the band their first bona fide, across all formats hit, and it proved that they could grow and mature in their art, but still remain their authentic selves. As Anthony says, the song is also a reminder of his lowest points in his life and how far he and the band has come. Well, I don't ever want to feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. And the place I love is where I am now. Um, making music with, with my band and, and making love with, with my friends and uh, my girlfriends, which is, to me, you know, the most sacred thing that I have going is, uh, is creating sound with, with my best friends. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below to help with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all new videos. I try to put out at least one of these video essays every three weeks on top of my regular podcast on this channel as well. If you have any suggestions for topics you'd like to see covered for these short video essays or even for my long form podcast on great albums, please comment below or find me on Instagram with the link in the description. Thanks again.